The 1958 FIFA World Cup was the moment when Brazil rose from the ashes of defeat and transformed into an unstoppable force that shook the world of football. The man who led this transformation was none other than the legendary Pelé, who became the first ever global superstar of football. This is the incredible story of how Brazil conquered the world and brought home the coveted trophy in the historic 1958 FIFA World Cup. This tournament was the sixth edition, and countries such as Argentina, Chile, Mexico and Sweden showed interest in hosting it. However, after a successful lobbying campaign, Sweden was elected unopposed on the 23rd of June 1950. Sixteen teams qualified for the tournament, out of which two spots were reserved for host Sweden and reigning champions West Germany. The remaining 14 places were contested among 55 nations from six different confederations. Three qualification spots were available for South American teams to compete for. Nine teams competed in total and were divided into groups. Brazil was in a group with Peru and Venezuela. However, Venezuela withdrew from the competition before playing any games. Brazil and Peru then played two matches to determine which team would progress to the main tournament. After a hard-fought 1-1 draw in Peru and a 1-0 win in Brazil, Brazil was able to qualify and extend their proud record of being the only team to qualify for every World Cup. At the age of 16, Pelé did not feature in the qualifying games. However, a few months later, he made his debut in the 1957 Roca Cup tournament against Argentina, where he scored twice in the two games, leading Brazil to beat Argentina 3-2 on aggregate. Despite his young age, Pelé had already displayed his incredible talent for Brazil and Santos. Therefore, when Brazilian manager Vicente Dalo Peola decided to select him for the World Cup, it was no surprise to those who had seen Pelé play. Pelé, on the other hand, was shocked by this decision. He later recalled, My father came home in the evening and said, Did you hear? It was on the radio. You've been picked for the Brazilian squad. And I said, Oh, Dad, they're playing around. I think there must have been a mistake. Brazil arrived at the tournament with a confident mindset and a formidable attacking lineup. Under the shrewd management of Feola, they played with a 4-2-4 formation that made full use of their attacking talent. Pele and Vava led the line, while Garincha and Zagallo provided width on the wings. Pele was given a free role to drop deeper and connect with midfielders, causing constant trouble for opposition defenders. Zagallo was a relentless winger who not only excelled in attack, but also tracked back and formed a solid defensive unit when Brazil was without the ball. Brazil had learned from past World Cup mistakes and placed greater emphasis on defence, making them a formidable force to be reckoned with. Before moving on to the main tournament, I would appreciate any likes, subs and hit that notification bell. I will continue to do a video on each World Cup every two weeks. Thank you. The format for the competition was different from 1954. There were four groups of four teams. Each team played once with two points for a win and one for a draw. No extra time was given. Playoff matches were organised for teams' level of points. Brazil was drawn into Group 4, which was considered the Group of Death. It contained multiple top European teams in England, the Soviet Union and Austria. The Soviets were the reigning Olympic champions. The Austrians had finished third in the previous World Cup. England, however, had been weakened by the Munich air disaster, where numerous English players had been killed. This included arguably their best player, Duncan Edwards. Despite this, England was still expected to be tough opposition. Manager Feola had planned Brazil's trip to Sweden meticulously. He verified all the finer details to ensure that the team base was an efficient distance from the stadiums and training facilities, and even considered the local climate. There are even rumours he made the hotel remove all female staff members to prevent any distraction to the players. His most innovative idea was the addition of sports psychiatrist Joao Cavales. He worked with the players and conducted tests to check their mental well-being. One issue was the health of Pelé. He had sustained a knee injury which meant he would miss the first two games of the World Cup. Brazil had an incredibly strong start in the competition, swatting Austria aside with a 3-0 victory in Udavala, despite not playing either Pelé or Garincha. However, in their second game against England, despite both teams being offensive-minded, the match ended in a goalless draw, making it the first ever World Cup match to end without a goal. In their third game, Brazil played the Soviet Union in a crucial match to decide the group winner. 
It was at this stage that Viola made multiple changes, bringing back both Pelé and Garincha, which proved pivotal in Brazil's World Cup campaign. Pelé, at just 17 years and 249 days, became the youngest player to ever appear in a World Cup at the time. Garincha's speed and dribbling on the right wing were exactly what Brazil needed to beat the physically powerful Soviets. They did not disappoint, and Brazil won 2-0 with Vava scoring both goals. Pelé and Garincha played instrumental roles in securing Brazil's victory and qualification to the quarterfinals. However, England and the Soviet Union had to play in a playoff to determine the runner-up spot. The Soviet Union won 1-0 and advanced to the final eight. England once again suffered a disappointing World Cup campaign. West Germany and Northern Ireland qualified from Group 1, while Argentina finished rock bottom in their first World Cup since 1934. France won Group 2, and Yugoslavia was runners-up. Sweden won Group 3, with Wales finishing as runners-up. Brazil played their quarter-final against Wales in Gothenburg. Wales had been a surprise team in the tournament so far, and Brazil was expected to win comfortably. However, the game would prove to be arguably their toughest of the World Cup. Despite some good play from Brazil, the game was goalless after 65 minutes. But in the 66th minute, Pelé finally broke the deadlock with a nice piece of skill to turn quickly and volley into the bottom corner. Pelé, in his excitement, would hurl himself into the net. It was his first ever World Cup goal. Cliff Jones of Wales would later say, The funny thing was that none of us had ever heard of Pelé. He was only 17. He was just a kid, but he was absolutely fantastic, and he proved to be the real difference that day. In their semi-final, Brazil would play France in Solna. This was a highly anticipated match because both teams had played very attacking football throughout the tournament and goals were expected. The game would meet expectations. From the opening minutes, the game was end-to-end. Vava would score after just two minutes, but tournament top scorer Fontaine would equalise for France after just nine minutes. Didi would score for Brazil in the 39th minute as the game went into half-time 2-1. In the second half, Brazil, and in particular Pelé, would show their class. Pelé scored in the 52nd minute after a goalkeeping mistake from Claude Abes. He would score again in the 64th minute after the French failed to clear the ball in the box. Pelé would complete his hat-trick with a fantastic volley in the 75th minute. In just 23 minutes, Pelé had taken the game away from the French. Plantoni would score a late goal for France, but the game would end 5-2 to Brazil. Sweden would shockingly knock out the reigning champions West Germany in the other semi-final. Germany took the lead, but Sweden would equalise before scoring two late goals to secure a 3-1 win. France would go on to beat Germany 6-3 in the third-place playoff. Fontaine scored an astonishing four times in the game. There was one slight hiccup in Brazil's build-up before the final. Both Sweden and Brazil wore yellow t-shirts. Sweden won the draw to wear their yellow jerseys. Brazil had no alternative prepared, so they ended up buying blue kits in Stockholm and they sewed their badges onto them. The 1958 World Cup final was an electrifying moment that had fans on the edge of their seats. The match between Sweden and Brazil was nothing short of historic, with both teams fighting tooth and nail for the trophy. Brazilian fans were confident of their team's victory but the Swedish captain, Nils Lidholm, had other plans. He scored a stunning goal just four minutes into the game, sending shockwaves through the stadium. But Vava responded with a goal of his own just five minutes later, and then again in the 32nd minute. Both goals were assisted by Garincha. The first half was dominated by Brazil, and the score was 2-1 in their favour at the break. In the second half, Brazil came out strong, with Pelé scoring one of the most beautiful goals in his career in the 55th minute. He chested across from the left wing to get past the first defender, then lobbed it over the second before volleying it in. The crowd erupted in cheers as Pelé became a global superstar. Zagallo scored a fourth goal for Brazil in the 68th minute, but Sweden Simonsson managed to score a goal in the 80th minute to keep the game alive. However, it was Pelé who fittingly secured the win for Brazil in the 90th minute with a header from close range. Brazil had won 5-2. The stadium was filled with tears of joy as Brazil was finally crowned the world champions. Pelé, who had seen his dad uncontrollably crying eight years earlier as Brazil lost the final, 
was now crying uncontrollably with joy. Fans in the crowd and back home cried with him. Even the Swedes were caught up in the moment. Swedish defender Sigvard Parling admitted, When Pelé scored the fifth goal in that final, I have to be honest and say I felt like applauding. Pelé, who was not even 18 at the time, had helped his nation reach the pinnacle of football. It was a moment that would go down in history and set the stage for Pelé's legendary career. Notable stats from the tournament include Just Fontaine of France won the Golden Boot with 13 goals from just six games. Brazil was the only team to score more than him. To this day, it remains the most goals scored in a single tournament. France were top scorers with 23 goals in six games, but they conceded 15. Brazil scored 16 in their six games, they only conceded four. 126 goals were scored in 35 games, giving an average of 3.6 per match. This was the lowest average goal per game in a World Cup up to this point. Pelé was the youngest scorer ever in a World Cup final. Nils Liedholm was the oldest scorer in a final aged 35 years old. The final also holds the record for most goals scored with seven. It is also the joint record for the largest margin of victory of three goals. This is still the only time a non-European team has won a World Cup held in Europe. Well, there you have it. That was the story of how Brazil won the 1958 FIFA World Cup. My next video will be on the 1962 World Cup. Please click like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching.